Welcome to another episode of the Soul Savvy Podcast. My name is Juan, and today I'm joined by Tony Huynh. He does social content for the Orlando Magic. He's a graphic designer, photographer, but most importantly, he's a homie. Tony, what's good? Hey, I like that. Yeah, what's up, Juan? My name is Tony. Nice to meet everyone. Uh, I'm excited to be on this podcast. And, you know, I'm a nobody just like anyone else, but I do have a love for fashion and sneakers. So, yeah, I'm excited to get on the show and talk about a few things. Yeah, man. Th- thanks again uh, for joining. And don't 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 downplay what, what you do and what you are, <laughs> man. Um, so, yeah, let's just uh, let's start off with a little intro about yourself. Um, you know, tell me, you know, how you got into this field, uh, you know, some of your hobbies, interests, things like that. Yeah, man. Back in middle school, when I was growing up, I uh, grew a deep love for passion through sports and specifically basketball. And once I dove into that, specifically with NBA Live 07, I think it was with Gilbert Arenas on the cover with my uh, when I was playing my book, I think PS2 at the time. Right. And uh, ever since then, man, I fell in love with the game of basketball and just started tuning in. Started with LeBron, Kobe, and Tim Duncan, all the greats, and then uh, really dove into more of basketball culture as the years goes on. Knew that I wanted to work in basketball because it was always been a dream job. And uh, was able to, you know, fortunately go into college and at, at my home state in University of Missouri. And then uh, after that, got a full-time job with the Orlando Magic, and it's been it's been a roller coaster ever since you know we're building we're a young team and uh hopefully people you know talk about us naturally but uh ever since then man it's been definitely a fun ride what are, what are some of your best moments that you've had with the magic i know you've been with them for four years now right um mm-hmm. so you know you like you said you went straight out of college so like yeah talk about some of the the best moments that you've had with them i think it's just for me it's just about the uh the passion behind like how much how genuine it is for me for what i love to do around the art field, to be a creative as a graphic designer. So being able to like work on a little, a lot of different campaigns, whether that's through social media or like things that we can do as a whole through marketing, it's all just like a branch of different little things that like hit, made me enjoy my job. But it's always the little moments too that I always tend to appreciate the most, whether that's like a fan interaction or like a player interaction that I have that I always think about. Like it's the little moments that like stick out the most to me. And any uh, any fun stories you can share um, about like interactions with the player or, you know, if they saw like a meme and they're, you know, like you, they just thought it was hilarious, anything like that? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, not exactly a fun inter like a funny interaction, but um, I would. I, it's it's funny to me that they a lot of the players that I have met uh, throughout like the last two years. I'm always wearing different shoes, you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah. you know when I come when I come to the to the arena, I make sure I'm correct. And um, it's cool <laughs> seeing like Paolo being part of Jordan Brand now because yeah. um, you know being able to wear a lot of things that are tailored towards specifically trophy room, like the, the ones and the sevens that recently released. Seeing like his impression, it's like okay, I see you. And then it's like kind of things like that little th- like interaction that you have, like a sort of connection. So, um, but specifically, I would say definitely being able to talk to some of the guys about like sneakers and like they always see like how how I try to like show up and show out. And uh, but I always see them too. Like they always step up their games. Uh, definitely Gary Harris is definitely one of those guys that like mm-hmm. dresses up like like perfectionist and like. He knows how to style himself for sure. And so every time I see him, like we were able to always instantly connect and like, I know the kind of shots that he's always looking for, whether that's his fits or like during the game, he always wears like a different sets of Kobe's and same with Markel. Markel is like an old school kind of classic guy. Like he still wear those shorts, like right, like right at the knee, like the jean yeah, yeah, yeah. shorts. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I would consider him as like the OG of the team, but all these guys, man, they're very fashionable. They're young and they're learning different things. and. You know, it's just what basketball players are and just being able to like be a part of that and just like talk to them on that topic when I don't when I'm I think genuinely I can I can try to find myself in a conversation like that until like a topic starter. But, you know, when they when they see it and then when you reciprocate it time and time again, it's always like an expectation that, you know, they, 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 they're always going to say something about it. So you got to be ready to go. Who do you think's the the biggest sneakerhead on the team? If you had to say? Oh, man. I would say Gary. Gary yeah. has some fire like shoes. Like he was wearing Cactus Flea Markets, uh, the Dunks. A lot of those guys wear crazy stuff, man. And then, uh, but it's just definitely him when it comes to like 
his range of like fashion, his knowledge of it. And I yeah. think any if you talk to anyone on the team, they will say the same thing. I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but has anyone ever been like, yo, that fits crazy or like let me get those let me get those sneakers or anything like that i remember always wearing a few shoes they were like okay i like i like the shoes and that, that'll be it you know what i'm saying that's the yeah. end of the conversation because i always try to make sure i match my outfit accordingly and like look as stylish as i can to like you know s s speak in a professional way but also like says enough about me about how i am genuinely as a person so you know but yeah not, nothing nothing too crazy is coming yet to where like i'm thinking about it constantly but uh yeah, you know, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, um, I just kind of want to transition a little bit um, into uh, summer league this past year. Um, you know, obviously you you were a part of that. You, can you talk a little bit about that that experience and and what it was like being down there in Vegas with with um, Man, you know, the whole NBA world? Yeah, like I mentioned before, like we're trying to build a young team that's like exciting to be around and the culture that people want to be a part of. From a fandom st standpoint, just like the following around the league and. You know, Paolo being the number one pick, everyone sees that, man. It's just like, it's it's, it's a different environment that I've never been a part of before. Pa Paolo's been great, man. Like, he just understands the spotlight. And when the camera's on him, he knows how to shine. And so uh, being able to experience that at first hand, that was like the first game of the, like, I think it was Tuesday night. It was like the first game of the summer league and all eyes were on Paolo, you know, camera left and right. But knowing he was on our team, it was a it was a unique feeling because you know that's Paolo, that's him. You know what I mean? So he's the number one. He's he's been the first number one since Shaq and Penny. So he has high expectations, but he takes everything under control and under pressure, and he just, he thrives in that environment. I think one of the, the the cool things with the summer league this year, like you mentioned, like it's I feel like it's different when you come in with the number one pick, right? With mm -hmm. Apollo, right? That someone that literally all eyes are on him. Everybody wants to see him step onto the court. So I'm sure that just added to like the the mystique and like kind of the craziness of of what is already a crazy, you know, couple yeah. of days. I know you mentioned a little bit about your your photography. Um I know you got a chance obviously to to shoot um our event this year um you know in in la and then you did a little bit with with complex con you know you shot low uzi um can you talk about that a little bit yeah man that's easy e right there for sure <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it was the first time you, you don't want you I don't just... want to bust out the dance real quick dude <laughs> But no, it was the first time he was performing. Uh, I just want to rock, and it was it was crazy lit. And uh, being able to work for a Complex and be able to shoot photos of you know people like Michael B. Jordan, you know, you know everyone's favorite person in the world, you know, even even myself. But uh, yeah, it's just like the little moments that you can't really get starstruck, but that you just got to do your job. And uh, thankfully, with me and the camera, it helps alleviate that because it's like that's the first thing I can like throw out there it's like hey let me get a portrait of you you know it's like or hey let me get a shot of you real quick doing this and this and that and so definitely a, a camera has been able to take me to places that i never thought i'd be a part of and definitely in rooms that i never thought i'd be a part of either so um compass time was definitely a fun experience you know from shooting photos of push the t and then asap rocky last year and then all these you know other great artists and you know influencers that i met at compass con it's it's been a f fun ride and uh yeah, it's just forever something that I'm always looking forward to each and every year because, you know, from the brands, from like how they do their marketing to how they do their, uh, you know, their their section of, of how they run things in ComplexCon and the merch that they put out is forever constantly growing with different trends and it's always inspiring to see and being part of them. That's how I take my photography. It's just like, it's forever a learning experience for me. And uh, it's definitely gotten me to places that I am always forever thankful for. Because I tend to forget a lot because I'm on to the next thing, but you know, yeah. these are your fun memories to look back on for sure. Good to look back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was I was thinking I I think even like Salehi, you know, you got a couple photos mm -hmm. he was shared, you know, a couple, which I, I thought was really cool. Um so yeah, that that's awesome. What so you know, obviously you've been doing this for for um pretty much your whole career, right? Even dating back to 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 college. So um, now that you've been in the, the field for a bit, what's some advice you would give to someone that's looking to get into, you know, sports content slash like creation? Um, yeah, man, definitely the most important thing, regardless of social media was around and I was being genuine and building your networks in the most organic way possible. Like if, if it wasn't me for having a camera, I don't think anyone that I would have met in the past few years would have wanted to follow me genuinely for who I am, unfortunately. And I think that's as a society that has, that should change in my opinion, because you know, these are 
connections that you have with people that can change your life but also become like a really good friend of yours it's, it's just like how we talk you know what i mean it's just like that's different that's genuine that's like something that i'm always gonna remember about someone let's transition a little bit into um into sneakers um you know obviously this is a, a sneakers podcast so um i know you kind of talked a little bit about your your origin story um but like let, let's go back and and again just talk about like what your favorite pair of all time was i know you mentioned like gilbert arenas like did you have any you know adidas gilbert go growing up or, or did you had you want to go back and get some or like kind of talk us through <laughs> a little bit of that stuff no nah, he, he was just pretty much the guy that i saw on the nba live cover and i'm like instantly i'm like yeah I'm, i like this guy because he's on the cover but uh as time goes on you know and i think in the 08 i got my first nba jersey which was uh a joe johnson one when he was playing for the Hawks at the time. Okay. Just a fun team to watch, but, man. Yeah, just cause? Or was there Just like, cause, but yeah. yeah, just cause. And then like Melo, you know, honestly, cause you're in, you know, you're in Denver. Like yeah. just seeing him with the cornrows and like Iverson, it's different times. It's just so fun to be a part of it back then. And I remember um, just going to Foot Locker and seeing a pair of shorts go for like $60. I'm like, yo, that's outrageous, man. Like I, I can't afford that. I gotta, I gotta take myself back to like, you know, Walmart and just to buy some basketball shorts just to get me throughout the day but so I was like one of those kids that just had like basketball shorts under my pants all the time yeah, I had to be ready yeah. just to hoop so um definitely <laughs> I loved it back then but uh definitely my first my favorite pair of shoes and I think that really got me to like really enjoy sneakers was definitely Kobe I think Kobe was like yeah, yeah. in his um this is pretty much his MVP season when you know 07 08 you know when he wore the armband he was like doing this with his jersey and stuff like that like that was just like a crazy mentality that he had and i love you know just watching him and ever since then and like everything from kobe just like from the jerseys to like the shoes the commercials to like the muppets that he did with nike and like yeah. all those little things were so dope and just to like wash and just constantly watch over and over again so yeah, man, definitely anything Kobe for sure. Um, what what are some of your favorite recent pickups that you've had um, lately? Like, you know, doesn't have to be in the last couple of weeks or so, but you know, last month, year, whatever. Just I made it my goal in like 2023 to like, if I don't like, if I don't get it for resale, I'm not gonna like spend any more money on it. You yeah. know, it's hard times. Like, if if eggs are seven dollars now and like I can barely get toilet paper back then, <laughs> then I'm like, I gotta put my money somewhere else. Like for yeah. now, but. Uh, Definitely my favorite pair of shoes. I actually have it right here. I, I came prepared. Yeah. Um, we'll also transition to this question too. The Alma Mira threes for sure. Uh, these these were actually my first soul savvy pickup when I joined the group, and so I was a mad hype. Like I was screaming at the top of my lungs because <laughs> I got through on the website on did, the Alma did the, did the KG anything is possible just in, in your room? Yep, exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, this shoes like I when I when I figured out the story though with with James Whitner and and whatnot it, it resonated with a lot of me because like it was just like of how i was able to rep like see myself in that because uh i was also raised by all women you know uh my, my mom my two sisters like they they got me through everything through college and all that stuff so it was a shoot that i must have like if if i didn't get these for retail i would definitely would have paid resale for like 700 800 dollars whatever the market was going on at the time but um, definitely a shoe that resonates with me. It was just like a sneaker that I, I definitely enjoy, love having. So, you know, obviously, like we mentioned, um, you are a, a Soul Savvy member. Um, you mentioned, you know, that was kind of your your first pickup was the Amamanier threes. Um, just in general, talk a little bit about like obviously your experience and and maybe about what some some of the pairs that you're after right now too. See, listen, I need me a pair of fours immediately. <laughs> the Amamanier fours, and then. Um, hmm. That's all I can think. Oh, and a pair of lost and found spot. I know that'll be hard to find. Yeah. I don't have anything of trade value because I actually wear all my shoes. I don't hold things on like stock to like trade up eventually. But so savvy as a whole, man, it's been awesome for me. I think it's like a whole new, different, unique experience that like is genuine like sneakerheads or like that want to be able to have a shoes that they built for their own collection to like tell stories about. And I think that's what I missed about having you know, conversations like that within the steer community because I, I was never really a part of it when I was growing up because I couldn't afford it, but I was always around the forums and stuff like that. So, you know, being able to work in the Slack of so savvy and then being able to have the opportunity to talk to be people like you and, you know, Tony and like all these other different creators from Anna and uh, shout out to my guy, Lawrence. I love mm -hmm. that guy so much, but uh, yeah, just like different things like that, man. I think part of being part of the community is fun, but 
there's only so many pairs that you can think of that you want that you envision yourself getting. Yeah. But uh, definitely the fours right now is the top of my list because behind my favorite pair of Jordan threes are the Jordan fours for sure. Where can the people find you if they want to check out some uh, some of your work? They can find me at, at so, so, so Savvy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to the community. I put my community before me. But uh, if you're, you're interested in photography, some funny stuff, and like me, just me being dumb all the time, definitely check me out on my IG at TonyH2K and my Twitter, Tony underscore underscore uh, H-U-Y-N-H. And yeah, that's it. Just just don't spam him with uh, with likes and, and DMs though. Cause... Hey, don't do not do that. Don't do that for sure. <laughs> I don't want those bots. Like, we, we already got rid of all the bots and the IGs. And all that stuff. I've been trying to do a lot of thirst traps lately on my IG story. It hasn't been working because all I see is bots and like spam accounts, and it's really discouraging. Not gonna lie. So definitely don't do that. <laughs> Tony, my guy, this was fun, man. Thanks, thanks again for uh, taking some course, time man. and hopping on the pod, bro. Yeah, for sure, man. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. It means a lot.